My name is Andrew Kirsch and I'm a pediatric urologist from Atlanta, Georgia. The ultimate goal of treating reflux is not just to prevent febrile UTIs, but the consequence of having multiple febrile UTIs, and that's renal scarring. And what we've learned over the last several years is that patients who are diagnosed later that have more infections have much worse renal scarring, and that could lead to problems in the future, like high blood pressure and other problems that we could have addressed early. So the, the message to, to pediatricians, to anybody considering treating reflux, uh, would be that early intervention um, is probably best for that child. And for most patients, deflux offers a really attractive alternative to the more invasive treatments like robotic reimplantation or open surgery. They go home the same day, there's no scars, and the parental satisfaction and uh, patient satisfaction is very high. So there are a couple of things that are really important about learning how to do deflux injection. Something called ureteral hydrodistension. And we put the tip of the cystoscope at the ureteral orifice, and we let the water flow until we see the opening change its caliber. So it goes from either fluttering, which would be a grade one, you could see in the tunnel, which would be a grade two, or you could actually see outside of the bladder, and that's a grade three. So we use hydrodistension first to classify the ureter, then we do deflux injection, and we know from our data that a ureteral orifice that has higher hydrodistension will require more volume of injection. It makes sense. But what we do that's really important is we don't just look at the mound at the end uh, and say, this looks good. What we do is we empty the bladder and then we do hydrodistension again. You should have zero hydrodistension with a successful injection. So we get that ureter to an H0 after whatever volume it takes. And I could tell you based on our experience is that if you have any degree of hydrodistension, you'll be using at least one cc. As you start to get to H3 ureters, you're using about an average of 1.5 cc's. With our experience over 20 years, we've gotten the success of an endoscopic injection after one treatment uh, pretty close to what it is for open surgery. So in our practice, we offer it as first-line surgical therapy because our experience shows us that these patients will have a very good success rate, both clinically, in that they won't have another febrile urinary tract infection, as well as radiographically, meaning that they won't have reflux on a BCUG and that makes the overall procedure an excellent alternative to the other treatment options.